Hello and welcome back to AmbiV. I'm Casper. Today we're going to take a look at installing the CAS in this SR20 DET. This process, I will describe a little more information about it than you probably need for your project, as I'll also be installing the actual disc inside the CAS for my AEM V2. This trigger disc is needed in order for the ECU to properly read the sensor. The process is pretty straightforward, but I thought I'd break it out into its own video from the rest, just for those who don't want to have to check out my project, but just want to see how the process is done. So, let's get to work. The cam angle sensor, or cam position sensor as it is sometimes referenced, is a sensor used to directly interact with the cam position as it rotates using a gear at the front of the camshaft. This is done with a large shaft that extends into the timing chain area. As you can see, the sensor is in the uppermost portion of the block just below the valve cover and is held in place by two M8 1.25 by 20 millimeter bolts. There are Phillips screws located on each side of the black cap that retain the cap covering the actual trigger disc within the sensor. This trigger disc is held in place by one additional Phillips head screw. The shaft on which this disc rides is keyed to the shape of the center of the disc. This prevents you from installing the disc incorrectly. This process is very simple but unnecessary in most CAS installs. If you need to do this, simply be careful not to damage the disc as it is very thin metal and also do not damage the o-ring on which the plastic cap sits. Make sure not to strip any screws. In order to begin the installation process of the CAS, you will need to remove the valve cover. To do this, you should remove whatever covers the coil packs on your particular engine then begin removing the coil packs themselves. In my case, I already have removed the screws that hold them in place, so I'm simply demonstrating where they are located. As you can see here, the coil packs are arranged directly down the center of the engine and lift directly off of the spark plugs. The spark plugs do not need to be replaced in order to do this. The coil packs will need to be left off to the side and ideally you will not want to pull, bend, or drop them in any way, shape, or form. So be fairly gentle with where you choose to place them. In my case, my exhaust is cool so that is a safe place to lay them. Once you have the coil safely stowed, you will need to locate the nuts holding the valve cover onto the head. These are located around the outside and inside near the coil packs. Once you remove these, you may also need to remove any breather lines or grounding wires that are located near them. Be sure to keep the grounding wires available for when you reinstall. Underneath the valve cover, you will find a gasket. This gasket fits in a channel on the valve cover and may be silicone to the head in several places. If this is the case, it will not come up with the valve cover, and you will want to be careful not to tear or damage the gasket in the process of removing the valve cover. Simply leave it where it is, and you can rock it back into place if you're gentle on the reinstallation. On my head here, you can see where silicone was used to secure these D-shaped portions of the seal. These are no notorious leaking points, and so silicone is often used to prevent a leak, but it also causes the gasket to be locked in place. If you leave this in place on your head while you're working, simply be careful not to lean on it with any tools that may break it, and that when you go to do the reinstallation, it is in the proper place and pre-slid into the groove before you attempt to clamp down the valve cover. You will need a 27 millimeter socket in order to rotate the crankshaft to bring the timing chain into the proper location. This can be done with a heavy duty ratchet or a breaker bar as I'm using in this case. Affix the socket to the end of the crankshaft right in the center of the crank pulley. Once you have this in place, slowly rotate the engine in the desired direction to align the timing marks. You will see these on the, in this case, second pulley, the pulley closest to the engine, in which there will be several deep hash marks. Sometimes these are filled with junk and will not be visible to the naked eye without cleaning. In my case, one was brighter than the rest, but it was the farthest to the opposite side of the timing arrangement that I needed for installing the CAS. Turning the crankshaft will in turn turn the cams via the timing chain. There are several rules of thumb to try to find the right position. Some say there are dark links on the timing chain that should align with the holes in the camshaft, 
I have seen that these links do not exist in some timing chains. Another rule of thumb is that the cams should be pointed away from each other in direct opposition, the lobes pointing outward. This is a good rule of thumb, but not precise enough. Ultimately, the best way to do it is with the timing marks on the pulley. My crank pulley has six marks. The mark that I used is the first mark in from the left. So count one mark in from the farthest out mark. You can see these marks at the end of the pin protruding from the block. And as I move it back and forth, you can barely see them in the video. These are usually covered with dirt and are obscured from view, so you may have to clean them up and make them more visible. In my experience, you use the second mark in from the left to align this. I have heard people say contrary points, perhaps it's different on other SR engines, but when I was attempting to align this CAS, I had to use one mark in from the left to get it to where I needed to be. If you do this incorrectly, the engine will not start as it will cause the CIS to be out of position for the firing sequence. It should not cause permanent damage, but you'll have to do the work over again to get it realigned. As you can see, I achieved the magic cam lobe alignment with them both pointed to the outside, so I'm pretty close. Once you have everything aligned, it's time to remove the CAS. Do this by removing the two M8125 by 20 millimeter bolts that hold it in place. My washers and bolts are not factory. There should not be separate washers involved in the equation, but for whatever reason, mine was missing the original hardware, so I needed to use these. If I have time, I will look at sourcing the correct hardware just to be sure that it's accurate, as they're probably a larger, broader head flange bolt without a separate washer or a captured washer. These bolts should not be overly torqued and should be easily broken loose with hand tools. Do not hit them with power tools and do not turn them in the wrong direction as the head is aluminum and you could pull the threads out of the head. Or equally bad, break the bolt off where it is. Now that you have the CAS loose in the head, you can simply pull it directly out the side of the head and it will unmesh from the cam. This is very straightforward and there isn't much to screw up here. As you can see, there are several dots on the CAS. There is a silver dot, a yellow dot, and a notch cut directly in the shaft. These three marks are used to align the CAS before it goes into the head, as well as guaranteeing the proper alignment once in the head. Before inserting it into the head, the silver dot should be aligned with the mark. Once that is done, you will be able to slide it into the hole and align it properly with the external mark I'm indicating down below. The yellow dot will slide into alignment as it meshes with the gears. With the silver dot aligned with the hash mark, you can now insert it into the engine. You will want to do so while maintaining an orientation on the CAS so that the oblong holes in the CAS for timing adjustment result in the hole for the bolt being centered within them. This is a little tricky as trying to do this can often result in the gear jumping a tooth and ending out of alignment once it is in its final place. But if you do not do this and you end up to an extreme, either farther to the edge of the bolt opening one way or the other, the engine is out of alignment and you need to check your marks. As you can see here, my silver dot is in alignment with the hash mark and I'm just now coming in contact with the cam gear. As the CAS is slid into place, the yellow dot will rotate into alignment with the hash mark. It's difficult to see from this angle in the video because of how high I had to keep the camera, but the yellow dot aligned perfectly. Aligning our view with the bolts for holding the CAS into place, you can see that the hole is aligned in the center of the oblong opening. This is perfect placement. This allows us to both advance and retard the timing once the CIS is in place. If the crank were out of orientation, there would be no way to get these bolts properly located while still maintaining the dots on the shaft. Here, I have a perfect range of motion, so I will be able to adjust the CIS as intended once it's finally installed. Now simply do the process in reverse, beginning with tightening the CAS bolts. Having them centered in the openings will put it in a factory position and will not mess with your timing results. 
Once you have a timing light hooked up, you may want to adjust one way or the other depending on your particular engine configuration. I cannot stress enough that it would be a really bad idea to strip the threads out of one of these sockets or to break the head off one of these bolts. Do not over tighten with tools. You don't need too much leverage, these just need to be tight enough to keep the CAS from moving. So snug them down good and call it a day. Once the bolts are nice and tight, double check that the dots are still in alignment to make sure that you haven't accidentally twisted the CAS in position and added or removed timing that you didn't intend to. And that the CAS is fixed into place good and tight. At this point, normally I would jump to a time lapse of reassembly, but I wanted to focus particularly on aligning this seal with the underside of the valve cover. This can take several tries. I found it easier to grab the seal where it's loose from the head, usually in the middle of either the front or the sides. Then begin guiding it into place by pressing up from the center and working your way out toward the edges. This will ensure that the valve cover keys itself to the portions of gasket that are glued to the head. This ultimately saves you a gasket, prevents you from having to dig out your silicone, and in theory makes this a little easier and less messy. Now it does take a little practice and some patience to do when you haven't done it in a while because you may not get everything aligned properly the first time. I would suggest walking around and checking both sides that they are made it flush with the surface before you begin installing any hardware. Once you begin crimping down hardware, you're beyond the point of return more often than not as you will have begun to do permanent damage to the seal and a leaky valve cover is one of the stupidest problems to have when you've been working on your engine. Just take a little time, make sure it's aligned properly and it will seat itself as you need. As you're reinstalling hardware, ensure that all your grounding wires are back in place before you finish tightening everything. It saves you a lot of time having to figure out why you have a weird problem with your electrical. This ground in particular is connected to your coil packs, which can cause all kinds of interesting running issues if it's either not properly seated or not there at all. I would rather not find out exactly how difficult it would be to troubleshoot this problem. My wiring harness, because of this particular project, also has grounds on the other side of the valve cover that are used for the rest of the lower sub harness. Once you're all done, definitely don't forget to plug the CAS back in. I have seen people do that simply because they're in such a rush to see if changing out the disc or changing out the CAS made a difference in the running of the vehicle. So as you can see, installing the CIS in an SR20 DET, specifically an S13, isn't that difficult. The most difficult parts are, as you slide the CAS in, you may end up being off by one tooth on the cam, which will cause your dots to adjust over. And potentially the only way you can get them into alignment again is by turning it to an extreme, either so far that you actually can't get bolts in, or so far that it's maxed out on the bolts and there's no adjustment room. Um, either way, in theory, the car won't start, so that will also tell you that there's a problem. But if that is the case, either you just need to play with turning it just slightly when you get it lined up and pushed into place, or you're off on the front of the engine on the pulley and you just need to drag the pulley back to a different mark. 
rub off your marks, make sure there, there's not one more full of dirt that you're just missing, that can not, yeah, cause you a problem. But otherwise, this is a pretty simple process and you shouldn't have much difficulty doing it. So, I hope this was helpful for somebody, and until next time, have a great day.